So today we're out with Richard Kane in Nimavadi. Richard, I suppose you have a lot going on here. Could you just give us, I suppose, give people a bit of an insight into all the different operations you're running? Yeah, well, we're just finishing off spring sowing. It's been one of the easiest springs in living memory, really. It's, it's all it's nearly getting too dry, which is unheard of up here in the north coast. We, Donegal's over there, we just get all the rain coming off the Atlantic. Yeah. Usually about 30 or 50 inches a year rain, so it's, weather's our problem. And it has been for the last three years, so this has been amazing. We're nearly finished, nearly got carrots planted. So, uh, we're just uh, cultivating the last field here. I'm actually using the drill to cultivate because the guys are all tied up or there's a breakdown in the yard. So I'm just giving it a pre-cultivate before I turn the drill on. What's the drill? It's a fair bit of kit you have here. What horsepower is this tractor? Yeah, I bought this quad track six years ago for out of England. Um, it's just 385. It's a, actually the smallest quad track. It wasn't really after power. It's more to do with floating and, and bad conditions. Uh, she can really can go places a tractor couldn't. Yeah. You there's no point in having a 300 horsepower tractor, which I had a class zero and um, 3300 and loads of power and all, but if it was wet, it was still going to get stuck the same as yeah. any other tractor. So, whereas this can float across the ground, this pretty much floats like we're actually cultivating across ploughed ground here, and it's just pretty smooth. And yeah, well, and even good. saying turning into the entrance for such a, a massive piece of equipment, it. It, it turns really well? Yes, it's back to the old Massey 1200 days where the bend in the middle of tractors. A lot of people said they had one if they'd have just kept developing those, but they did in the big, big tractors. But bend in the middle, it's very, very good for tillage operations, cultivating or sowing, because you actually could be halfway around your turn and the back of the tractor is still straight along with the drill, so it doesn't pull it out. Um, and I suppose on the drill, it's another fair size of kit, six meters, is it? Yeah, a six meter Amazon Cirrus. It's um, grain and fertilizer. Was planned to go back to back to the old Massey drill days of grain and fertilizer down the spout. Where um, autumn, even in the autumn time, crops are struggling to get through the winter with such bad, harsh conditions. So uh, I've got again. I usually uh, sort of. Scenario: I buy second-hand stuff out of England, large, larger stuff that we can uh, pick up uh, pretty good money. How much ground do you cover in a day, drilling uh, wise of this? The drill, if I have no help, um, I, I can usually average about ten acres an hour. Um, but if it's somebody bringing me seed to fields and things, um, obviously it'd be a lot, a lot higher. But. If you do get to 10 acres an hour, it's, it's very good, so it's a nice quick way of getting the crop in the ground. Yeah. We're usually under pressure with time, but again, this year's been so easy. It's flew through it. Yeah. And I suppose um, with the, the GPS, do you find it helping? I would find yes. from drilling days with no GPS, you'd drill 30 acres with a one pass and you'd come off and you, you're just wrecked. But yeah. now it's, it's, it's just a joy doing any operation with GPS. It's, I try to tell anybody if they don't have it, get it because it just makes life. Yeah, well, that's all we're doing in tillage is going up and down in straight lines. So it just makes sense for the computer or, or to do it. So it's, um, I've had it now seven years, a full RTK, and it's, I wouldn't go back at the bell. So. Uh, Whenever I bought this tractor, she's 2008, she, had a, she was all auto steer anyway on this screen. And to update it to RTK, I, they were going to want four or five thousand pounds from Case to put it into the next level. And it was only still keeping the old screen, so I made the decision, contacted yourselves at Advantage, and we put in a full new Trumbull system. Uh, and a new, brand new screen and all, and it was just seemed to be the best thing to do because it now a full ice of us and all. Obviously, the older tractor wouldn't have had that, so yeah. uh, it's worked, worked really well. As the, this screen was starting to give a bit of bother, I would have needed a new screen as well. So I thought this would be 
the the ultimate answer. Yeah. Does it ring? I suppose when you have another similar system in your fast track then as well. Yes. Well, this was the first one, and that led me to get the fast track one as well. So because I quite liked it, um, and obviously the two working together. Probably one of the big things um, that I've moved to this is you don't always keep your tractors forever. So once this possibly could be sold tomorrow, you wouldn't know, and they can take this system out and put it into the next tractor. Yeah. Um, the, the manufacturers, they just want it, sort of want to tie into their own systems and not, not, not very user friendly between other tractors. So this was my idea of um, doing this. Kendrick put it in very well. Yeah, it's very neat and very nice. It is. Probably a smaller screen. This is a 1050, I think, and I put the bigger screen into the fast track. And then oh, the 1260, I would yeah. probably go 1260, would probably go with the bigger screens. And say with the fast track, what jobs would you be doing? The fast track, at the minute, is doing all the spraying. So it's linked to the sprayer, controls the sprayer, and the tram lines up a bit. I don't sew any tram lines with the... Uh, the drill, I just so it's all sewn, and then the, the sprayer tractor does the traveling. And, um, I'm in between systems actually. I used to own, use class. Uh, cl the class tractor system still does the fertilizer, so it doesn't. You can't link. It's quite hard to link in the exact same tram lines to go up and down oh, the tram line. Okay. Um, so. No, their system might say. I'm in between at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose besides the say tillage side, you, you're also doing rapeseed oils. Yes, we do the rapeseed oil. Yeah, Reuter Gold. Um, we've been at it 14 years. You should we can take a closer look at that inside. Yes. Okay. So besides say the carrots and um, the rapeseed oil, what else would you be planting throughout the year? Um, we're planting about. 800 acres of cereals, wheat, barley, uh, oil seed, and then the carrots in between that. But, uh, that's now pretty much all year round, which is good, keeps all the machinery moving and makes it pay for itself. Yeah, exactly. Keeps yeah. you busy. And see, this is nice of us drills, so will she shut off at the headlands and stuff like that for you? Or? She does. I've never, I haven't gone down that route yet because I. I don't know, but I probably should make use of it, but I'm sure if it's somebody here to show me for a day, I probably <laughs> would do it. Yeah, we'll get Kendrick back up to you. <laughs> Old-fashioned to me, but I just go by, go by the eye and at the end. But it, uh, yeah, definitely. The, the Trimble system and the ISO bus um, can tell the drill to turn on and off and, and things like that. Yeah, it just runs similar to section and rate control. Yes. I haven't. I do that on the sprayer and in the fertilizer showers all controlled that way, but on the drill, I haven't actually even thought about it, to be honest. That's another day, we're always under pressure so much that... Yeah, it's just go out and get the job done as quick uh, as possible. Yeah, it's usually that way. Um, so I suppose you see the Amazon drill here and I saw a spreader in the yard and that you're, you're obviously a big fan of, of the Amazon machinery. Yes, um, I was starting to get, just getting pretty good backup from from Amazon guys and they're helpful and the machines they're nicely designed, pretty light and um, I've ended up you sort of get one computer and you know how to work it so you just sort of in maybe buy the machines so one computer will do them all as well. I quite like another screen, I don't have it on this one, this is why this is running ISO bus but I do generally like two screens that you get one for GPS and one for Rexbus. Yeah. I know probably I could have another Trimble screen as well. That could be sorted. Yeah. <laughs> but even like you said, going across the pipe ground here, it is, it's very smooth. It's not bad. Uh, there's no suspension in the cab in this old lady, so that's so just a bit jumpy. But, um, and how old is this tractor? The tractor is 2008, so she's 17 years old. But it's <laughs> nearly 8,000 hours and the odds, well, she just got an oil change and filter change, which is pretty robust. Um, some of the new tractors nowadays, or, or the technology in them is just mind-blowing and the costs are just spiraling out of control. And tillage, is, tillage is really at the bottom of the market when it comes to everybody, all the stockmen, 
hens, cows, beef, all want as cheap as possible and it's on a world market and we just can't afford 200,000 pound tractors. I personally can't do it. So I buy second hand stuff, a few hours on it and take the chance in the hit. Whether it's, um, I'm lucky, I've been lucky with this one. Like that, you you have all the power, and with the tracks, should yeah. be able to travel. You have the latest technology, the GPS. Yeah, uh, it sort of just ticks all the boxes. Yeah. Um, and I don't. A lot of the other there's a tractor in there, and there's computer screens, touch screens. You only need twenty percent of it. Uh, you don't really need all the fancy stuff. Um, if it steers for me and controls the drill, that's all I need. But yeah. It becomes it, silly money for. Yeah, I'm sure if you haven't spent much more repairs with this, you're not really going wrong, no, are you? No, hopefully, touch wood, we're, we're good. So Richard, could you just give us a bit of an insight into the brighter gold side of the, your business? Yes, well, we, we started crushing oil uh, 14 years ago. Well, we started about eight, 18 years ago crushing it for biodiesel production, and the biodiesel thing fell by the wayside, and we started cook it, doing it for cooking oils. Um, different varieties and we've we've been at it now 14 years but our, our brand name was from the Broider Hoard which was found four fields away in a satchel uh, it was ploughed up in 1896 and it's actually down in, in Dublin Museum it's worth going to see it's one of their best uh, gold hoards ever found in Ireland it's about two and a half thousand years old so that's where our brand comes from that's amazing um, and I suppose you've you've had a lot of um, visitors and yes, and we've had a few visitors through here from King and Queen here a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we've, a lot of chefs have come, and we've, we've been very lucky now. You're growing everything here and bottling it. Yes, we we grow all our oil seed between 150 to 200 acres of oil seed, and we dry it, clean it, press it, uh, filter it, and bottle it all on farm, and leaves leaves in a bottle. That's brilliant. Uh, so that's kind of the remnants of the oil. Yeah, that's the oil presses. We've uh, some oil seed there. The oil seeds here. Actually, tools are always fixing something. So that's the oil seed. We crush it. That's forty-five percent oil, and we we sell and that's the meal that comes out of the press and that's sold for cattle feed, high protein cattle feed. Oh, very good. So you're making. There's no waste. Yeah, there's no waste. Uh, Make most of all of yeah, it. Yeah. Right, so Richard, this is another side of the business where you do carrots. Yeah, we at the beginning of COVID, we took up bought on some carrot machinery and done up all our old cattle sheds, and we uh, started doing. We've, we're now growing thirty acres of carrots as well. Uh, so for six months a year, we stay in here, and then end of March, shut down, uh, we start planting. Now. So it's turned out it's good for the arable end because it keeps the machinery busy 12 months a year. Yeah, and so it doesn't it give you a break. <laughs> it doesn't give us any breaks now at all. And actually, this has turned into far harder work than, than the oils. everything else. Oh, yeah. uh, okay. um, whenever you mix weather in the winter time and muck and water and machinery, it's just breakdown. So. And you've a full kind of... Yeah, this is a sizer and grader. And then out here... The the polisher, bee stoners, and, and a grater, so um, that's turned into quite a busy wee business. Not not wee, but. And are you selling directly to supermarkets? No, or? we don't do. We're just selling in the processing market at the minute. Oh yes, um, okay. Possibly down the line, but fresh food and supermarkets doesn't really rock my boat. Yeah, fair enough. So. <laughs> Right, so Richard, this is kind of a shop area you have, but there's a kind of a nice history to this whole building here. Yeah, this is used to be, well, in my father's day, about 50 years ago, it was milked the cows in the barn, and this used to be actually two old sow crates. So we, uh, we done it, we haven't obviously had animals for a long time, so we've done up the whole building and it's now in the Broider Gold's store and shop and offices. Fantastic, it's great to have the bit of history behind it, isn't it? It is, I, I the Broider Gold, obviously found four fields away and that's down in Dublin Museum, it's really worth seeing. It's one of their nicest uh, gold hoards found. Um, lots of history there. That's brilliant. Thanks anyway for having us today Richard. No problem at all. Thank you.